Hey gang, and welcome back to another EDH gameplay. This week we've got some new commanders, so I hope you enjoy. This week I'm playing my Erebos God of the Dead deck. Kevin is playing his Gaunty Lord of Luxury. Brian is playing Riku of Two Reflections. And Jason is playing Lazav, Demir Mastermind. For my opening hand, I kept three swamps, Blighted Fen, Consumed Spirit, Phyrexian Reclamation, and Mindstone. Kevin's opener had three swamps, Mystifying Maze, Beseech the Queen, Dread Return, and Soul Ring. Jason kept a hand with two swamps, an island, Altar of Dementia, Tectonic Edge, Triskelion, and Burnished Heart. Brian's keep had two islands, Rootbound Crag, Cultivate, Solemn Simulacrum, Doubling Season, and Flooded Grove. Kevin wins the die roll and starts us off. For his first turn, he plays Swamp and follows it up with everyone's favorite turn one play, Soul Ring. I too have a turn one play, and I play my Swamp and cast Phyrexian Reclamation. Jason follows my lead and plays a Swamp. For his turn, Brian plays Rootbound Crag tapped and passes to Kevin. Kevin plays a Swamp for his turn and naturally casts Gaunty, Lord of Luxury on turn two. He chooses Brian as a target and looks at the top four cards of his library, exiling Inferno Titan, which Kevin was nice enough to show the camera. For my turn, I play a Swamp and cast Mindstone before passing to Jason. Jason plays an Island and then casts Altar of Dementia and passes to Brian. Brian plays Flooded Grove, then passes to Kevin. Kevin plays his third Swamp, then moves to combat, swinging Gaunty at Jason. During his second main phase, he casts Beseech the Queen, finding a card that costs three or less. He finds Cabal Coffers and passes to me. Following Kevin's example, I play my third Swamp. I then cast Erebos, passing to Jason. Jason plays a Swamp and casts Burnished Heart, one of my favorite artifacts to come out of Theros. He passes to Brian. Brian plays an Island for his turn, then casts Cultivate, putting a basic on the field and one into his hand. He passes to Kevin. Naturally, Kevin plays Cabal Coffers, then using the Soul Ring, taps it and three other swamps to cast Inferno Titan, dealing one damage to each of us. As if that wasn't bad enough, Kevin then swings Gaunty at me, of all people, dealing two damage through combat. For my turn, I play Blighted Fen, then cast Stratoscythe, exiling a swamp from my library. Considering the amount of people playing black at this game, one of my little creatures is going to be really big really soon. Jason plays Tectonic Edge for his turn, then taps it in a swamp to kill Kevin's Cabal Coffers. With only two mana remaining, he passes to Brian. Brian plays his Land Drop for the turn, then taps out, casting Doubling Season before passing to Kevin. Kevin plays a Swamp for his turn, then moves straight to combat, swinging Gaunty and Inferno Titan at Jason. Inferno Titan's ability triggers, and he does two damage to Burnished Heart and one to Jason. Jason responds, sacrificing Burnished Heart to Altar of Dementia, milling himself for two cards. With nothing in the way, Gaunty and Inferno Titan smash through. During Kevin's second main phase, he casts Whip of Erebos, which unfortunately doesn't gain him any life, but he can still bring back creatures from his graveyard. At the end of Kevin's turn, I take two and draw a card with Erebos. For my turn, I play High Market before casting Liliane of the Dark Realms, using her plus ability to find a swamp and passing to Jason. Jason plays an Evolving Wilds and cracks it to find an island. He passes to Brian. Brian plays Temple of the False Gods, then taps to cast Parallel Lives. Kevin plays Mystifying Maze for his turn, then moves to combat, swinging Inferno Titan Liliana and dealing 3 damage to Jason for blowing up his Cabal Coffers. At the end of his turn, I pay 2 mana and 2 life to draw a card with Erebos. Nykthos is my land drop for turn, and I tap 7 to cast Overseer of the Damned, blowing up Kevin's Inferno Titan, which goes to Brian's graveyard. He also gives me a 2-2 zombie, which is just the icing on the cake. For his land drop, Jason plays Academy Ruins, and while he's deciding what to do, Kevin and I exchange some fighting words. Jason decides to cast Clever Impersonator, targeting Gaunty. He targets Kevin, and at this point Brian and I are just along for the ride. With nothing else, he passes to Brian. For his turn, Brian casts Riku of Two Reflections before passing to Kevin. For his turn, Kevin plays a Swamp and then casts a Massacre Worm, killing Riku and my 2-2 zombie. Brian and I each take two, but I also get another second zombie because Riku died. Big surprise, I play a Swamp for my turn, then cast Knight's Whisper, taking two and drawing two cards. Using my remaining mana, I cast Liliana Vess, using her minus ability to go find a card and put it on top of my library. I make a huge rookie mistake and forget to attack Kevin and pass to Jason. Jason plays Watery Grave, taking 2 damage from the Shockland to make it come into play untapped. He pays 6 mana and casts Machaeus the Unhallowed, which has a cute interaction with Clever Impersonator and Altar of Dementia. Jason also skips his attack phase and passes to Brian. Like his last turn, Brian plays a land, then casts Riku before passing to Kevin. Kevin plays Bajuka Bog for his turn, targeting Jason because the rivalry is real, before moving on to cast Butcher of Malakir, aka Grave Pact on a Stick. Jason responds to the Butcher of Malakir, sacrificing his cloned Gaunty, milling three cards into his graveyard before it comes into play. He also takes two damage from Massacre Worm. With Clever Impersonator coming back onto the field with a plus one plus one counter, Jason uses the chance to clone Gaunty again, targeting Kevin once more. 
With nothing else, Butcher of Malachy resolves, and Kevin passes to me. Jason nicely reminds me that a creature on his turn died, so I should have gotten a 2-2 zombie. I play Ghost Quarter for my land for turn, then cast Consume Spirit on Butcher of Malakir for 4. This causes us all to sacrifice a creature, and I let a zombie token go to the graveyard, Jason lets the Clever Impersonator die, and Brian unfortunately has to kill Riku again. I then cast Sword of the Animus before moving to combat, swinging my Overseer at Kevin for 5. With nothing else, I pass to Jason. Jason's turn sees him set up a bunch of card draw by casting Kevin's Grim Hera Specs and his own Mystic Remora. For Brian's turn, he changes it up a little bit and doesn't play a land and instead just casts Riku. For Kevin's turn, he pays 4 mana to cast Dread Return, allowing Jason to draw a card but bringing back Butcher of Malakir. He thinks about swinging at Liliana Vest but realizes that Erebos is a creature and passes. For my turn, I remind Brian that I have Blighted Fen on my field and could kill Riku at any time but because I'm such a nice guy, I don't. Instead, I cast Lashrithe, who, when coupled with Stratoscythe, could make one of my creatures potentially a blowout. I pay the mana to equip Scythe and 4 life to put Lashrithe onto my Overseer of the Damned. With a quick tally of the amount of swamps on the field, my Overseer of the Damned is a 21-21. And yes, we remembered that Lashrithe only counts my swamps. Moving to combat, Jason implies that he'll kill my Overseer of the Damned. Kevin reminds me that he's got a mystifying maze. That leaves Brian as the only one with no defenses. Overseer does 21 damage to Brian. In my second main phase, I use Liliana Vest's minus ability again to go find a card and put it on top of my library. For Jason's turn, on his upkeep, he lets Mystic Remora go to the graveyard by not paying for its accumulative upkeep. Jason then windmill slams Triskelion with Micaeus, and everyone knows that's an infinite combo. This causes some debate, as Kevin has Massacre Worm and Butcher of Malakir on the field, and we try and figure out whether or not Jason kills himself by going infinite. We go through the motion with Jason first taking out Butcher of Malakir, which has the added benefit of killing Riku again, which I just find hilarious at this point. He's lost a bit of life, but we realize that he can still kill Massacre Worm and still go infinite without dying. Knowing when we're all beat, we all scoop and move on to the next game. Well gang, that was an interesting game. Uh, we got to see a lot of fun cards. I really like Gaunti. I think he's a really interesting and fun mono black commander. It was super cool to see him steal Inferno Titan and then start doing a huge amount of damage as early as turn 4. I mean, you also saw how good it was when Jason stole it with Clever Impersonator and got two triggers off of it, so I think Gonti's here to stay. My Airbus deck did a pretty good job. I was clearly not aggressive enough with it, and I should have been smacking Kevin and Jason in the face from early on. I wasted a few combat steps, and frankly, instead of attacking Brian, I probably should have called Jason's bluff and smashed him in the face for 21. This could have had more of a result in the endgame when Massacre Worm was dealing two damage with Triskelion dying and losing life from the Massacre Worm trigger. Unfortunately, Brian didn't do or contribute very much to this game at all, other than taking 21 damage to the face. Uh, his deck was mostly just a bunch of doubling effects on the field, which didn't really help when his commander kept dying every turn. Lazav was a fun commander, and it was a little anticlimactic to lose to a combo, but Jason got there in the end, and considering how strong Kevin was from the get-go, it was a bit of a surprise to see him turn around and win like that. That was this week's gameplay video. If you liked it, be sure to tune in every Monday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for more gameplays, deck techs, and top 10 lists for EDH. As always, thank you for watching, and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.